You know, it really wasn't all that long ago when I uploaded videos calculating Goku's power levels. It's over 9,000! No, not those power levels. For all his Super Saiyan forms and both his God forms from strictly canon sources, like the manga and Dragon Ball Super. And ever since then, I've seen a bunch of comments from people asking me to do a follow-up on how powerful Superman is in comparison. So I figured why not? Now, calculating the stats for the Man of Steel isn't going to be easy. We've seen different versions of Superman do a whole bunch of crazy things over the years, like sneeze away a solar system, look at somebody's soul, fly fast enough to leave the universe, seal up holes in reality with his heat vision, and punching through the walls of reality. So because I want to try to keep things as quote unquote reasonable as possible and not just be like, well, he's multiversal or whatever. Let's just call it a day. I'm only going to be calculating the post crisis Superman's feats. So basically anything after crisis on infinite earths, but before flashpoint. Yeah, I know DC brought this Superman back and he's been doing stuff in comics again, but as far as I've been able to tell, he hasn't really done anything that trumps anything I'm going to calculate in this video. So I don't really see the need to look at anything he's done recently. So with that out of the way, let's figure out how powerful the post crisis Superman is. First, Let's start with his strength. Now, Superman's acknowledged multiple times before that his punches can destroy planets, something that he's backed up repeatedly over the course of his superhero career. And as I've mentioned in a few of my other videos, that means the force Superman would need to put into his punches to destroy an Earth-like planet is equal to about 53 quadrillion megatons. Now, that's cool and all, but that's nowhere near as impressive as that time he rammed into and destroyed a shadow copy of the moon in 2009's Justice League number 30. In that issue, we saw the Justice League trying to work out how to destroy the rapidly approaching shadow moon, with Superman eventually using the legendary powerful infinite mass punch and successfully destroying it. But just how much power was he putting into his punch? Well, for Superman to destroy the Shadow Moon, he would have had to have surpassed its kinetic energy, meaning we'll need to know the moon's mass and velocity to figure out how strong this infinite mass punch is. Thankfully, writer Dwayne McDuffie provided both of those things on this page. As far as the mass goes, I know Batman screws it up and says Earth's moon only weighs 81 billion tons, but it was acknowledged in the same panel that the Shadow Moon has the same mass as the real moon, and Dwayne McDuffie later claimed that this 81 billion line was in fact a typo, and that the Shadow Moon was actually supposed to have the same mass as the real moon. And if that's the case, then the Shadow Moon has a mass of 161 sextillion 988 quintillion 463 quadrillion pounds, or 73 sextillion 476 quintillion 730 quadrillion 900 trillion kilograms, or 80 quintillion 994 quadrillion 231 trillion 600 billion tons. And according to Green Lantern, the Shadow Moon was traveling at 7,614,000 kilometers an hour, that's about 4,731,000 120 miles per hour, or about Mach 6166 by the way. So plugging both of these into the formula for kinetic energy gives us this, and doing the math tells us that, just in matching the Shadow Moon's kinetic energy, Superman was able to generate a force of 39 quintillion, 290 quadrillion, 396 trillion, 510 billion megatons worth of force. That's a little over 740 times more powerful than the force needed to destroy Earth. Holy f of course, Superman's not just an insanely powerful hitter. The dude can also lift a ton of weight, as he demonstrated in the pages of 2009's Justice League number 29, when we see the Man of Steel actually move the Earth. Now, as we already know, the force needed to push a planet out of the sun's orbit by 1% is about a thousand times less than the planet's mass. And because he's messing around with Earth, this means Superman's capable of moving 6 quintillion, 583 quadrillion, 212 trillion, 590 billion tons, right? Well. Here's the thing, if you take another look at the page, you should notice that both Green Lantern and Superman flat out admit that it's going to take both of their power to get the planet moving, meaning Superman's not able to move the planet on his own. So assuming they're each doing half the work, then that means Superman's really only capable of moving 6 sextillion, 583 quintillion, 212 quadrillion, 590 trillion, 500,000 pounds, or 2 sextillion, 986 quintillion, 95 quadrillion, 911 billion, 938 million, 700,000 kilograms, or 3 quintillion, 291 quadrillion, quadrillion, 606 trillion, 295 billion tons. Now all this is cool and all, but I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, well, Superman lived through the Book of Infinite Pages, and the Spectre, and he ripped Darkseid in half that one time, he had the Soul Fire, and he's just the most powerful character ever, so he's way stronger than what you're saying. Well, here's the thing about that. Sure, Superman tried to lift the Book of Infinite Pages, but it's clearly not infinite, since Ultraman, Superman's doppelganger from an alternate universe, claims that he read the last chapter of the book. How can there be a last chapter of an infinite book? It makes no sense. You know what really sucks though is that Superman had to get help from Shazam to try to pick up the book, and they still couldn't do it. And while it's true that Superman tried to move the Spectre, the fact is he couldn't, even with some extra help. 
And by the way, the comic says that Spectre is made up of eternity, which is a concept of time and not weight. Even if he did have infinite weight though, wouldn't the ground not be able to hold him up? And on top of that, how could Green Lantern hold him up if he had infinite weight? Are we going to start arguing that Green Lantern, Shazam, Ultraman, and Wonder Woman can all lift an infinite amount of weight too? Seriously, the whole Superman's the best because he has no limits thing never made any sense to me. I mean, it's been said multiple times that the dude does have limits, that there are things he just cannot do on his own. So why are we still trying to pretend like he can do anything he wants? Anyway, let's check out Superman's speed. As you might have guessed, over the years after the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline, we've seen plenty of impressive speed feats from the Man of Steel, like in 2005's Flash number 220, where Superman was shown keeping up with Wally West on foot, with Wally noting that Superman was running at a speed of 2,000 miles a second. That means that Superman was casually running at a speed of 7,200,000 miles per hour, or 11,587,000 kilometers an hour, or about Mach 9,383. That's about 100 times faster than the Earth orbiting the Sun. Now that's obviously impressive, but come on, this is Superman we're talking about. We all know he can move way faster than that if he wants to. How fast exactly? Well, fast enough that he can apparently race photons, meaning he can move at light speed. And even if you don't want to agree with some random thought bubble, like you want some actual proof that Superman can move that fast, then how about the fight between a mind-controlled Superman and Wonder Woman in 2005's Wonder Woman number 219? During the fight, Max Lord times Superman flying from Earth to the sun and back with the whole trip apparently taking him 1 minute and 54 seconds, 414 seconds total. And considering how the distance from Earth to the Sun is 92,900,000 miles, or 149,600,000 kilometers, then that means Superman flew at a speed of 5,870,975,752 miles per hour, or 9,448,419,600 kilometers an hour, or Mach 7,651,781. In other words, post-crisis Superman's able to fly almost 9 times faster than light speed. But even that's still just scraping the surface of Superman's speed. In 2007's countdown number 48, we see Superman arrive on Earth from the star Vega after Jimmy signals him with his watch. Considering how the distance between Earth and Vega is a little over 25 light years, and assuming it took Superman about 5 minutes to show up, which is pretty reasonable, I mean, given what all we see going on here, then that means he's capable of flying at a speed of 1 quadrillion, 767 trillion, 77 billion, 44 million, 559,771 miles per hour, or about 2 quadrillion, 843 trillion, 834 billion, 839 million, 199,772 kilometers an hour, or about Mach 2 trillion, 303 billion, 73 million, 241,982. That's about 2,639 times faster than the speed of light. As far as his durability goes, I've seen a lot of people arguing that post-crisis Superman can only withstand planet-busting attacks or moon-busting attacks with extreme lowballing, but this dude is way tougher than that. In the pages of 2003's JLA number 77, we saw that Superman was once able to hold a mini black hole in his hand. Yeah, I know, it was originally contained in a magnetic field, and the black hole itself is about as big as a speck of dirt, but even so, it's literally said that if Superman let go, the results would be, and I quote, goodbye solar system. You know how tough you'd have to be to hold back something that can destroy the solar system? Well, if you saw my video on how powerful Thor is, links up on screen, then you'd know that this panel essentially proves that the post-crisis Superman can withstand the equivalent of about 535 octillion, 372 septillion, 848 sextillion, 948 quintillion, 374 quadrillion, 800 trillion megatons. That's over 10 trillion times more powerful than the force needed to destroy Earth. That's f***ing insane. Of course, that's next to nothing compared to the time when, in 2005's JLA number 113, we see Superman tanking an attack from the Void Hound, a weapon that destroyed 10 solar systems during its test run. How powerful is that? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it takes over 535 octillion megatons to destroy a solar system, so multiplying that by 10 means that Superman can withstand 5 non 353 octillion, 728 septillion, 489 sextillion, 483 quintillion, 748 quadrillion megatons. That's about 112 times more powerful powerful than the estimated amount of energy released during a supernova. You know the craziest thing about that though? Even that feats next to nothing compared to when he went up against Mageddon in 2000's JLA number 41. Towards the end of the fight with the previously mentioned ancient weapon, Superman decides to absorb the energy from the anti-sun powering it before it could explode, with Martian Manhunter stating that the anti-sun had enough energy behind it to vaporize half a galaxy if it exploded. And Superman still managed to walk away from it in one piece. Now the amount of energy needed to destroy a galaxy was calculated to be about one undecillion, 362 decillion, 332 nonillion, 695 octillion, 900 184 septillion, 703 sextillion, 500 quintillion megatons. So if we divide that in half, we can see that Superman, while absorbing Mageddon's power source, was able to withstand energy that would have created an explosion equal to 681 decillion, 
166 nonillion, 347 octillion, 992 sextillion, 351 quintillion, 750 quadrillion megatons. You know how insane this is? That was like 15 suns exploding in his face. Get that weak shit out of here. Absorbing all that anti-sun basically proved that Superman could survive over 14 million supernovas. And finally, let's try to calculate the heat of Superman's heat vision. I say try because Superman's used it for a ton of different things, some of it at least making some sense, like when we saw it easily cancel out absolute zero, which sits at negative 459.67 degrees, and a lot of it not making any sense at all, like when Superman was able to hit a ghost with it that one time. Now even though there are a lot of feats we could use to max out Superman's heat vision, given the fact that it's been confirmed to be immeasurably hot, I think it's safe to say that we can compare it to what's known as absolute hot, or the concept of the highest attainable temperature of matter. Currently that threshold is theorized to be the Planck temperature, which sits at a temperature of 255 decillion degrees. If Superman's heat vision is capable of reaching the Planck temperature, then that means Superman can output something that's over 9 septillion times hotter than the interior of the sun. Holy hell, who knew Superman was so powerful? Well, I mean, I guess we all did, but who knew he was this powerful? Seriously, galaxy level feats? Multi-planet level punches? Unbelievably powerful heat vision? Damn! Honestly, before putting this video together, I thought, yeah, Superman's tough and all, but I'm sure there's a ton of characters out there that could take him down pretty easily. Now that I've done all the research, though, I'm not entirely sure anymore. But anyways guys, that's how powerful the post-crisis Superman is. If you agreed with any of my calculations, or even if you didn't and you want to let me know that too, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.